My name is Jerry Berman, and I'm chair of the Internet Caucus Advisory Committee. And I'm here to welcome all of you on behalf of the Internet Caucus Advisory Committee and the co-chairs of the Internet Caucus and our distinguished chairman of the Senate Commerce Committee to our first State of the Net conference. As you know, the Internet Caucus and the Advisory Committee, of now, which is now a hunt over uh, 170 members of Congress and 200 organizations, nonprofit, for profits all of us engaged in the dialogue and of policy for the wonderful open decentralized internet. We have banded together in 1997, and this is our ninth year, of putting together policy forums, speaker series, an international dialogue to educate policymakers and the community about the challenges to an internet. Share, a shared vision. It's not partisan, not Democrat, not Republican. It's all of us working together for an open, decentralized internet that serves commerce and freedom. We all believe that whatever the policy choices, it's best to understand the technology and where it's going and to make an out of that and that dialogue will come appropriate policy. We have come a long way since 1997 when 10% of U.S. households were online and now it's over 60%. There were, in 1995, a third of Americans uh, were on, had computers. Now it's 80%. We've now crossed over where more Americans are using broadband than narrowband technology. We understand the applications for commerce and education, politics, uh, and, and we are excited about the potential that now confronts us. We're heading towards convergence, the merger of, of Internet with, with cable and, and broadcast and other digital media. And we face the challenges of making the, the Internet and the computer uh, a household appliance and, and technology with, with open standards and an open platform. And we face challenges, consumer trust, and we're going to talk about these major issues that confront the, the Internet. Consumer trust from privacy to security. We've got problems of spam and spyware that are hindering the, the Internet experience. But we want to control them in a sense and free the technology and keep the technology open. We want to protect intellectual property, which is subject to massive infringement, but, but the same technology that that, engage, that permits infringement also permits new content delivery systems and will explode the, the marketplace of ideas if we can bring those two values into, into some kind of balance, both the protection of intellectual property and its underlying technology. In 1996, the Telecom Act was rewritten. The Internet was a footnote to that act. Now it's before the Congress again, and the Internet is front and center, and the question is, how will Internet values affect the telecom future and how will we build off and secure broadband connections for everyone in a safe environment, uh, open to free speech and commerce. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome all of you. I want to thank all of the sponsors. Uh, you have a, hand, a booklet there on the front. We, the, our primary sponsors of this conference. It's our first. We used to have po just policy conferences, but now we want to start out a new Congress, 109th, a new administration, with bringing people together to debate the policy issues. We are indebted to our sponsors and to the supporters of the Internet Caucus Advisory Committee and the Internet Education Foundation, and we are particularly indebted to the staff of the Internet Education Foundation, which I'm proud to be president. Uh, we've got to uh, applaud Tim Lorden, and Danielle Yates and Charlie Wilson for really doing a spectacular job. Just three people working night and day for the last several months to put this together. It's been an, a concept. Now it's a reality. We hope it becomes a tradition. And with that in mind, I want to introduce our, our first speaker, the chair and founder of the Internet Caucus on the Senate side, Senator Conrad Burns from, from Montana, who he was the original sponsor of legislation to create a broadband fiber optic internet. He, was a, he brought a vision to the Congress. He continues to bring vision. He's fought the good fight for broadband. He's fought the fight against spam. 
He's continuing that, and, it, and that's, that's what the, the work is all about. And he's, uh, I'm proud to introduce him. We've been, had a long relationship, and he's been a leader in this effort to, to bring education to policymakers and to bring us all together to have a dialogue. I also want to uh, welcome our international guests who have a panel. Uh, it is a global uh, internet. Uh, we have to deal with uh, its global ramifications, the questions of governance, the issues that confront the Europeans and the Asia are the same that confront us. We need to have a broader dialogue, and that's part of our program too. Senator Conrad Burns. Thank you very much. Hang on. Thank you very much, Jerry. I'll, um, we're running on sort of a tight line this morning. We've got the uh, President Pro Tem of the United States Senate, and he likes to open up the Senate at, at 9 uh, or whenever you're opening it up this morning. And uh, we want to hear them. He also chairs the Commerce Committee, so uh, I want to get uh, uh, I want to get uh, him up here as soon as possible, so he can so he can get out of here. Uh, I don't think you'll ever find. Uh, uh, you know, I knew this side of the room would fill up first because you know I never I avoid Dulles as much as I can when I fly in and out of Washington D.C. And because number one, you never you never quite get done arriving, and you never quite get done leaving. You'll go there from people movers to the airplane and, or the, ne the next concourse or whatever. And, um, and so and always in these people movers, the first guy in sits down in the first seat. Then everybody has to run over him. You know, it just, it just kind of goes like that. Instead of going to the back of the, back of the outfit and, and, uh, and try, to, uh, try to at least accommodate people who are loading and unloading. But I just knew that. When, and then there's nobody in the front seat, so I know most of you are Lutheran. Um, that takes care of that. Uh, before I uh, introduce my good friend from Alaska, uh, I just want to just mention uh, thanks to Jerry Berman and his fine crew for this. It's a, this is a terrific turnout for 8 o'clock in the morning in Washington, D.C. As you know, nobody wakes up around here until about quarter after 2. And, um, and they always said about us, I was raised around the stockyards and, and the auction business and, and the farm broadcast business. And, of course, we've got all of our work done by noon, and we start off early in the morning. The, um, we pretty much uh, completed uh, our agenda, what we would like to see happen in the 109th uh, Congress. And just to uh, give you an idea, there'll be uh, I want to introduce Mike Ross, and Mike is sitting right down here. Uh, and, of course, Lisa's here with, with uh, Senator Stevens' staff, and uh, they're very, they work very hard on the Commerce uh, Committee, so we try to set an agenda at the first of the year and hope we get some of it done. Uh, I think uh, the centerpiece of the agenda this year will probably be Spy Block, the next generation E911. As you know, we worked very hard uh, to pass uh, enhanced 911 legislation in the last Congress. Uh, can spam uh, an implementation and how we can do that. I'm, I just uh, come back from a conference uh, with the uh, Electronics Industries uh, Alliance. Uh, we've talked about many, many things, uh, security, privacy, safety, and all of this. Universal service will be a part of this dialogue in the next two years. Uh, TV ratings, fair, uh, the, the fairness of that act, uh, and television ratings. Uh, ICANN, of course, we're all familiar with ICANN and, and the uh, area that they cover and, and the responsibility that they have. Uh, rural broadband, as we see broadband going to rural areas, particularly in the wireless area. Uh, continues to be a, a, a top priority of ours. The digital democracy, and of course uh, that, is, that is an open, an open uh, system, an open nomenclature where information is allowed to flow and, uh, and to be uh, uh, devoured, I suppose. And also, after coming back uh, from that, uh, from that uh, conference uh, on, with the electronics industries folks, ensuring the uh, information security of the digital world, and really the new buzzword, I think, around Washington now in policy is convergence. I think Jerry touched upon that. Uh, it used to be we could see a signal or, or note a signal and tell you if it was AM radio, FM radio, what it was video, what it was, what it was data, or whether it was voice. Digital took all that away from us. It's just ones and zeros today. And now we talk about bandwidth more than anything else, is, is how do we move the, the amount of information in a very short time. And then our continued work with, the, uh, with our, our friends on the Pacific Rim, uh, the U.S. Asian Network, which uh, continues to 
do good things in the relationship of the countries and the, and, and the, international, the international taste of the Internet and this great information service. So we have, uh, we've, uh, we're going to, it's going to be a very busy 109th Congress. And, um, and as you know, we will be taking up some of these issues in the, in the uh, new Telecom Act. When we passed the 96 Act, um, we found that, and we had to do it because we were trying to deal with 90s uh, technology with a 19, or 1935 law. And we just couldn't, we just couldn't do that. Now, it, now as technology moves much faster, uh, we will we will now uh, we will now go into the situation of uh, rewriting and tinkering with that act, and um, and, uh, and and uh, and and try to do some things in that light. I'd like to introduce to you now uh, Pat Leahy. I don't think Pat's not down here. He's my he's my uh, he's my colleague who also has done a lot of work in the Internet Caucus, and we appreciate his efforts and and. Uh, and everything, but uh, but uh, this is a this is a terrific turnout for the, for uh, this this caucus, and I want to thank everybody for coming today, especially the vendors who who come up, continue to come up with these ideas, and uh, and new technologies that uh, that enhance our lives, and sometimes they bring headaches to our lives. But anyway, I'd like to introduce to you a, a good friend from Alaska. Uh, he's chairman of the Commerce Committee now, was chairman of the Appropriations uh, Committee. Uh, stepped down from that and, and now is working very hard in commerce and also the, the president pro tem of the, uh, of, the, of the United States Senate. Let me say one thing about this. You know, there's a bunch of us that as, as, we, as we mature in this body, technologies come and go. And uh, I would say 16 years ago, there wasn't very many senators that was computer literate. They didn't touch the thing. I had to learn from my kids just like everybody else. And, uh, but nonetheless, knowing that this technology keeps coming on, keeps us all young, and keeps us interested in what's going to happen about our kids and our grandkids and the next generation of communications of, of democracy and, and all of these things. I don't know of a man in this, in this Senate that stayed younger, uh, longer than, than Ted Stevens. Uh, he's been a great mentor to me. And, uh, and, and he's in these new ideas. He's continually uh, probing for ideas. And as technology moved, he has moved and wasn't afraid to grab a hold of it, wasn't afraid to take it and says, how does this apply to my state? How does this apply to my country? So I'd like to, I'd like to introduce right now our, our featured uh, speaker this morning, uh, the President Pro Tem of the United States Senate, Senator Ted Stevens from Alaska. Thank you very much, Conrad. It is nice to be with you uh, in the morning here. Glad to see as many people here who are here, and I, I uh, am pleased to have a chance to, to speak with you. And we look forward to seeing some of you this afternoon uh, in uh, room 902 of the, of the Hart Building as we examine some of this technology. Uh, the uh, Conrad's right. I, I go back a long ways on some of these computers and whatnot. I brought the first uh, automatic typewriter and the first computer to the Senate, as a matter of fact. But it's, uh, it's been a, a long, long uh, way to get where we are today. Uh, the Internet really has transformed the way we do business, uh, communicate, uh, we learn. Uh, and, and as Conrad has said, it's changed the face of our state without any question. And I often think about how the world of communications has changed. Let me tell you, when I was a freshman senator and came down here in 1968, to call to my state was $5 a minute. And we had, we had an allowance for so many minutes because the call obviously costs a lot less to call Delaware than it cost Alaska. And so many minutes of, of, of I mean, so many words on, on telegrams. I don't know anyone that uses telegrams now. And I do think that we're all in a much different uh, situation. My staff and I call home uh, dozens and dozens of times a, a day, and the cost is three to five cents, as you know, a minute. Uh, that's, that is real, really is what brought, has brought about the great advances in, in communications technology uh, in our state. It it's, has transformed the way we live. 
We, we now, we, had, we have about 240 isolated villages in Alaska. When I came to here, there, there, were, there were no doctors and there were no health aides and there was only one phone that went into one, one of a series of villages. People went to that village to call and that, what, that phone was owned by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Today we have uh, all sorts of communications. I've got one friend who's an Eskimo whaler and he loves to call me in a cell phone when he's in the skin boat going after those whales off Point Barrow. Now, we have hooked up uh, every village to telemedicine and teleeducation and we're working on making the 911 system, as Conrad says, more effective, enabling people to not only send emergency messages but to receive disaster alerts as well. I tell you the story of, of one mo sub, uh, snow machine uh, pair, pair of guys on two snow machines going across the, the snows up in Mount McKinley, the Mount McKinley National Park and did not know there was a crevasse ahead of them. One of them uh, went smack in the crevasse and found himself about 35 feet beneath the surface of, of, of the snow uh, in this crevasse, standing on, a, on, on the edge of his snowmobile that was wedged with skis right there at that point in the crevasse. He thought, man, this is the end of the world. Then he remembered he had a cell phone in his pocket. He dialed 911. It just happened to be picked up at the time, and 20 minutes later, the National Guard helicopter pulled him out of the crevasse. Now, if you don't think that's changing life, that is really changing lives for people who know what, what they've got in their pocket. Things we considered luxuries back when we did the 96 Act, uh, uh, when we passed the Telecom Act, are the necessities today of American life. Uh, we, my, when I was a kid, we used to hear people talk about a chicken in every pot and a, a car in every garage. Today, it's an email address, a Blackberry, a wireless laptop, and soon be a digital movie phone, internet televisions, and devices that exist only in that great American imagination. We've gone a long way from the time that Dick Tracy had a, had a, a, a watch that would carry a, 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 a sound, not only sound, but show, a, show an image of the person calling him. Those were dreams of, of, of the kids in, in the 30s and their reality today. The time has come to ensure that our communications laws keep pass with the, the communication advancements that we all know exist. As, as, as I'm sure you've heard many times from the 96 uh, rewrite of the communications law, the first in 60 years uh, was done. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we talked very little about the Internet then. I was one, one of the co-sponsors and, and one of the conferees on that that bill when it, when it became, before it became law, and now less than 10 years after its passage, uh, it's, it's obvious that it's necessary to rewrite it uh, or to amend it. We're not sure exactly what we're going to do. The in Internet was in, in its infancy when that act was uh, written, and though we did talk of tumbling technology uh, and, and knew that the Internet would evolve and converge, uh, we, were, we really did not discuss in that conference the specific technologies that you all will be discussing today. There are so many new ones, it's, it's hard to believe. But I believe then and I believe now that the Internet demands flexible, regu a flexible regu regulatory regime, regardless of the platform that's used to provide it. And it should not matter whether Internet is provided by cable, telephone, DSL line, satellite, power line, or wireless device, uh, all should be treated equally. To do otherwise, in our judgment, would be arbitrary regulation. In the 21st century communication environment, there are so many communicating, c competing interests, all of which must be treated fairly. They cannot be a multiple separate set of regulations of de dealing with communications, that would, be, that would stifle emergent, emerging technology. Uh, we, we believe we need to recognize there are issues that state and local government is are, are adequately suited to, to address. There, there is a field for, for state and local governments in the communications policy. And I believe, uh, for instance, 
services, issues such as service quality and consumer protection would be best dealt with locally. Maybe that's just my opinion, but I, I think if someone turns off my BlackBerry without notice or charges me more uh, than I agreed to pay uh, for a service to my own home, I should not have to run to the FCC in Washington, D.C. to try and resolve the dispute. There should be some local involvement and state involvement in the communications policy in the United States. Balancing these and other issues will be a very tough ta task. And as Conrad has said, I'm, I'm fortunate enough uh, to co-chair the Commerce Committee with a man I, who's so close that we call each other brother. We've, we've worked together now for a long time. We're both from the World War II generation. And, and we, I believe, have developed the same philosophy as we've worked here in the Congress so that we work together in a bipartisan way. And I think that's very important when it comes to the work of this committee of ours. This is not a committee that should deal with politics. It should be de deal with issues and solutions, and we intend to do that. We will work with our colleagues and listen to testimony from people around the country before we commit to a specific plan of action on any issue. As we review the nation's communications laws, Senator Noor and I will not start by putting pen to paper. We, we start by asking questions, questions of our staffs, questions of almost everyone we meet. So let, let me tell you some of the questions that we want to ask. Uh, what can we do to remove barriers to entry for new technologies? What can we do to provide certainty and promote capital investment in new technology? How can we enable the Internet to improve lives and keep America competitive in the global marketplace? Are our anti-spam laws working, or is there more we could do and should do? Should states be permitted to tax phone service that is provided over the Internet, or should we make the tax moratorium of the last Congress that the last Congress approved for four years, should we make that permanent now? When it comes to spyware, how can we satisfy America's needs for privacy with the need for innovation and growth in the e-business community? Should voice over IP be free of regulation, or should, should it pay into the Universal Service Fund? Should someone pay for providing Internet service? Is this age of global, in this age of global terrorism, how can we best address law enforcement's needs in the new VOIP environment? Should telephone companies be required to acquire cable franchise if they provide video movies and shows that compete with cable? Should we protect movie producers, musicians, and other artists from pir pir piracy, or should we allow all material to, ex to be exchanged freely over the net, even if some of it was stolen? The Internet has an immense impact on our world, and the impact on new communications laws could be more profound, more profound than those of the past. Uh, in, in our efforts, Dan and I will be guided by our commitment to do what is right for the American consumer and innovator. We are concerned about, we are unconcerned about old battles, and that we've been through a lot of them. Uh, we need new ways of thinking about these new issues, and these new issues really do require us to think before we act and to listen before we do anything at all. We hope to move away from the paradigm that puts each issue or technology into its proper regulatory box. Instead, our emphasis will be on convergence and how to foster continued creativity and continued innovation in the whole communications field. Uh, I've got many more questions I'm asking people. But I hope you understand we are really trying uh, to find those questions and listen to people and think before we ask the Congress to act. Uh, I do believe in this Congress we will act and we will find solutions to many of these questions. We want to hear from you. This group is a marvelous group of people with very, very diverse backgrounds and we believe we should, we should listen to you. We're going to ask you to put together a group of, of people who represent sort of similar issues, not more than about 18 or 20, 
and come up and sit down and talk to us some afternoon and just let us listen to your ideas and your comments and ask us questions let you ask questions not a hearing we, we're not going to believe in hearings now we're, we're going to try to find some ways to dig in and understand these issues before we have a, a bills to present and then we'll listen to people's views on those bills but we should we should really have a chance to listen uh, Conrad Burns is going to be our leader in, in the communications area we've kept this issue at full committee for a lot of reasons Senator Noy want to be very much involved in it and I do too and we've, we've got so many people with, with this, such great interest in, in, in this area that it's hard to select uh, uh, the, the members for the subcommittee have a subcommittee so Senator Noy and I decided communications would be a full committee issue for this Congress and we're all going to be involved and we all will welcome your comments your suggestions and your interest in, in what we're trying to do. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, thanks, Senator Stevens, and uh, that sort of lays out our agenda as far as the Commerce Committee and the Congress uh, coming up. And it's uh, just like I say, um, Ted uh, uh, did mention about the listening sessions that we will probably be having. That's the way we did it on universal service when we, uh, I, I suppose the press are, is here, so we'll not say anything bad about the press, but uh, we, we do it in a, in a, in a building and, or in a, in a room and, uh, and, we, and we give and take. Uh, but it's a, uh, it, it's uh, what you say is, is stays there and what we say stays there and, and we find out a lot of things where we can talk more freely about uh, the, the issue at hand. Uh, this afternoon, of course, at 5 o'clock, the tech fair up in SDG 50. Is that where it is? Exactly. And uh, people have to remember, they've gotten used to going to the heart building. It's yeah, crazy. it's not in 902. So those of you whose noses bleed easily, uh, we're not going to do that. Uh, SDG uh, 50, uh, in, uh, that's the Dirksen building. It's the middle one, and that starts at 5 o'clock tonight. We look forward to seeing all of you there tonight. Uh, along with, uh, with some other friends of, of the internet. Uh, again, I want to thank Jerry Berman, and we've got to we got to go to work now. He says he has 15 minutes for questions. He's prepared. 15 minutes for questions. Really? <laughs> He's into it. He's into it. Uh, really, I I'll tell you this: the, the guy marvels me, you know, and and uh, because uh, of, of just uh, the changes that's well, the way we communicate in the Senate and the and the communications and how it's changed the infrastructure and everything, so uh, we would uh, we would take some questions, I guess. Are there questions for the senators? Did we answer no, them did, all? Did you answer them all? Uh oh. Good. There's always one. That prompts another one. Mr. Mike Nelson from my courageous one. Uh, Mike Nelson with the Internet Society. Uh, we work with countries all around the world on Internet technology issues and Internet policy. It's fair to say that there are a lot of other countries that still are learning how important the Internet is and how important their policy decisions are in shaping the evolution of the Internet. Are there initiatives that the Commerce Committee and some of the other appropriate committees will be pursuing to support U.S. government efforts to educate other countries and other policymakers around the world on these issues? Because as Jerry said, as all of you have said, this is a global medium. Well, it is. And you know, when we were going through uh, spam legislation and all of this, we, we were listening to uh, uh, our good friends in the U.K. and, and, uh, and in Europe. Uh, the original uh, structure of the uh, U.S. Asia Network was a uh, give and take uh, a medium in which we could exchange information what's going on here and what's going on there. Now, the up-and-coming developing countries, uh, especially in the electronics information age, uh, they're starting kind of from scratch. We had to deal with an old nomenclature. We had to deal with some old technologies in order to fight our way through to, to, for the new technologies to be deployed and used. Uh, now, they are emerging sometimes in some countries uh, much faster than we're getting some things done here in the United States. And um, so we're working with those countries. I think, um, I think if, there is a, uh, if there is an area where uh, we can make an impact internationally is here in our own hemisphere, and that's, uh, that's, the southern, that's, uh, that's South America and, and what they have to offer to this hemisphere. Our communications uh, north and south are not, uh, are not what they should be. And, uh, and even the knowledge and the technologies 
uh, that's available to them, especially in the wireless areas. Uh, I think we have, we have a great, great future and the possibilities of, of, uh, of linking this hemisphere together. Yeah. Ted, you want to address that? I, I agree with that. I think one of the great problems we have is that there's the absolute uh, interests of many governments in preventing the full use of, of an open Internet. And we have to find ways to deal with, uh, with those problems. Uh, very clearly, uh, uh, the, the the more that the Internet is available to the average citizen, the more, more people are going to be free and free to think and free to, to, to react and free to, to associate together. In many places, there are strict national laws that would prohibit the use of the Internet, and we, we're going to have to work to bring those laws down. Sir? Excuse me. Uh, Jeff Fox, Consumer Reports Magazine. Uh, you mentioned that you're looking for input, that you're going to have uh, some kind of informal meetings. Can you say when, when those will happen and for anyone that wants to contribute, uh, who should they contact? Well, let me take you back. This has been a, a policy of the Commerce Committee going back many years when Senator Magnuson was chairman uh, uh, of the Commerce Committee. He, we had a whole series of such meetings. I'll tell you a little history that one senator had been for changing the, the, the laws that apply to U.S. Olympic participation, and, and he was defeated. Uh, the next to Congress, another senator decided he would lead that, and he was defeated. And my old friend Warren Magnuson came to me in the, the third Congress and said, Ted, I think you ought to take this on. I said, Maggie, I thought you liked me. <laughs> and, and, but he, I said, look, if you'll let me do what you've done, and that is no hearings, just have these consensus meetings, have information meetings, and have, have us go until we, we get a piece of legislation we think we ought to have hearings on, and I'll do it. We did that. And, and we went for about six months, really, just meeting with everyone in the country and around the country, as well as here. And when, when we finally drew up a bill as a result of the final group that was uh, selected to represent all the various organizations, the Commerce Committee held one hearing. It was on the floor of the Senate one day. It was on the floor of the House one day and became law. It's the U.S. Olympics law. Uh, this is where we want to go. We want to go to the point where we have we want to select a group from your people. We, we will call you the informed uh, Americans in the Internet field and listen to you. And, prep, and soon we'll listen to a whole series of groups. And when we do that, we will finally end up with, with a group that will start thinking about writing a new law or rewriting the existing law. But that will be, these will be informal meetings, as kind of say, be off the record. But we're going to continue to work until we find something we, we, find, we believe we can move forward in and have, have a substantial agreement. Now, that, that does not really mean that we're not going to pull off pieces as we get there and, and as Conrad says, move forward on specific smaller pieces. But the, the 96 Act itself, I don't want to touch that until we really understand what we're doing and this time be, be sure that we're not just setting ourselves up to have another Congress less than five years away try to rewrite it. Question over here. In regard to the 96 Act and the rewrite, will you uh, separate telecom and media issues in looking at this this time, as some have suggested? And also, how will issues like indecency and uh, broadcasting, which relates to Op 70 on the web, be handled through this rewrite? Thank you. Well, we have members of the Commerce Committee who are interested in, in those issues and others. We will look into those issues, whether they will come in a separate bill or what, and move forward first, or whether they be part of the, the really the policy uh, bill that we're looking for uh, is a question that has to be resolved. But uh, obviously, those issues are already before us, and people are talking about, right, about them right now, particularly the indecency subject may, may move through the House, and it does. We'll, we'll be required to think about moving that without regard to moving on the general policy legislation. When discussing the Telecom Act rewrite, Senator Burns used both the words rewrite and tinker, which imply very different scope and time issues. Uh, cow the, the cowboy language, they're, they're interchangeable. <laughs> I, I just have one question, uh, prerogative of the chair. I've heard some discussion of not only just consulting with a number of groups in Washington, you know, in a, uh, candid off the record way, but that you're also interested in field hearings and going 
out to Silicon Valley and... You used the wrong word, my friend. They're not going to be hearings now. Uh, discussions. We want to... Yeah. Hearings take a lot of time to set them up, to keep the records and everything else. And, you, and you, some people don't get a chance to follow through on the questions just burning in their mind. You can do that if you have a small group and you're talking for a period of time. And that's what we're going to do. And we are going to go at, uh, to areas around the country to do this. Hopefully we can do a lot of them here, but... Uh, and don't offend any Washington representatives, but we'd like to be able to talk to some people who, who are not here, who really have as much interest in, in the long run some of these issues as those people are within the Beltway. But yes, we'll, we'll have here the, these meetings throughout the country. We'll have hearings here when we're through. Last question. Uh, Shannon Kellogg, RSA Security. Um, you mentioned uh, spyware and uh, also spam. Any additional thoughts on what the committee is looking uh, uh, forward this year to do specifically about cybercrime, combating cybercrime, while protecting and enabling innovation? This is a uh, this is a dialogue that we're going to have, and and this is where the uh, uh, the uh, electronics industries are very much interested because of of the increase of uh, 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 hacking and and uh, and some security things. Uh, we'll be uh, we'll be looking a lot into that. We'll be uh, working with those groups. Uh, I uh, I spent two days at that conference and um, and come away with uh, a, a lot of information and a lot of more questions and answers. To be right honest with you, so we're going to continue down that road of of this dialogue. Um, the uh, the increased activity of illegal of illegal uh, hacking and and uh, and jamming and this kind of stuff has increased dramatically uh, over the last two years. And uh, so they'll be a part of that dialogue. I just want to say one thing, last thing, and that is we admire the House. The House is moving forward very quickly on a lot of single issues. Uh, they may not take the time to do what we're, we're going to do in terms of these listening sessions, and they're going to move. Uh, we have very good relationships with them now, and I think we ha have an understanding of what each is going to do. I think they'll move a series of uh, individual bills, that some of which we'll put together into a larger bill, but we, we do look forward to working with them, and I think it's really great we have people who have worked together for a substantial period of time now in the Congress who all feel the same way, and that is, it's not that we didn't do a good job in 96, but tumbling technology has caught up uh, with the 96 Act, and it's time now for us to take the tumble out of it, and be able to take care of technology as it evolves and not have to rewrite every time we do have a new generation, so to speak, of telecommunications capability. Great to be with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you, Senator Stevens, our founder, Conrad Burns. We're going to take a, just a five-minute break and be back because we're, we want to get on time for our, our session on 